In this module, we will demonstrate how to apply whole blood and blood products to gen plates. Start by preparing your sample. Please visit genvault.com for directions on preparing white blood cell or buffy coat preps. Whole blood or derivatives of whole blood can be applied directly to the gen plate. Your gen plates will arrive in a kit box that contains 20 gen plates securely sealed in an impermeable foil pouch. 20 permanent adhesive storage plate seals and a protocol. Begin by removing the gen plate from the silver foil pouch. Gen plates should only be removed from the pouch when they will be used. We recommend using the gen plate within 60 minutes of removal from the pouch. If this is not possible, it is important to keep the gen plate in a dry environment with less than 40% relative humidity until it can be used. Also, we recommend saving the pouch to reuse for transporting the plate or for storage if you do not have a Genvault cabinet. Remove and discard the temporary adhesive seal on the gen plate before applying samples to the storage elements. <coughs> Briefly vortex or agitate your blood sample prior to application to ensure that it is fully mixed. In this example, we are working with a 2 mil blood aliquot but you may have a vacutainer or other container. Also, in your laboratory, it may be necessary to use blood samples in a biosafety hood. Using a pipetta, aspirate 10 microliters of your blood sample. Position the pipetta straight into the well of the gen plate and dispense the sample, being careful to dispense only onto the paper and not onto the plate walls. We have found that positioning the pipetta straight onto the well achieves better performance than angling the pipetta. Simply repeat this step until you have applied your entire sample to the gen plate. A repeater pipetta is a useful tool if you will be applying a single sample to many wells in a gen plate. Apply a 1 mil pipette tip by squeezing the blue buttons and pushing the tip onto the pipette. Then release the blue buttons, set the pipetta to dispense a 10 microliter volume. Carefully place the pipette tip into the blood vial. Pull up the filling lever to take up blood. The display will start blinking to indicate that the first amount dispensed will be inaccurate. Dispense one aliquot back into the blood vial by pushing down on the button. The display will stop blinking. Now you are ready to dispense an accurate 10 microliter aliquot. Carefully align the pipette tip with the first well of the gen plate and dispense 10 microliters directly into the center of the element without touching the element. Repeat this step until you have dispensed nearly all of the volume in the pipette tip. To continue with the same blood sample, refill the pipette and repeat the steps for filling the pipette. To discard the pipette tip, first dispense any remaining blood back into the source vial or waste container by pushing down on the filling lever. It is very important to discard remaining blood in the pipette tip before removing the tip to avoid contamination. Hold the tip over the waste container and press the blue buttons to release the tip into the container. After applying your samples, it is necessary to dry the gen plate. You may do this by placing the unsealed plate in a biosafety hood or other clean environment with less than 40% humidity overnight, 12 to 16 hours in most cases. If the humidity is higher than 40%, it may require up to 48 hours or longer to adequately dry the gen plate. Please ensure that the elements are completely dry prior to sealing. It is also possible to dry the gen plate in our fast dryer. Because the gen plate is spotted with a sample type that is potentially hazardous, 
GenVault recommends that you place the fast dryer in a biosafety hood for the drying step. As the sample is dried onto the paper, the cells are lysed upon contact, inactivating viruses and bacteria. After the sample is dried onto the gen plate, it is considered non-biohazardous. Ensure that the fast dryer is plugged in. Open the lid of the fast dryer and position the gen plate on the deck. After the gen plate has been placed on the dryer, tightly close the lid of the fast dryer. When the lid is closed, push the button on the right side of the fast dryer to start. The dryer will illuminate when the fan is running. Leave your samples to dry overnight in the fast dryer. When the drying is complete, turn off the fast dryer, open the lid and remove the gen plate. Apply the adhesive storage plate seal that is included in the gen plate kit. Ensure that the seal is firmly attached to the top of the plate. Avoid creating bubbles on the surface of the plate. Your gen plate is now ready for storage. To achieve maximum DNA recovery, allow the plate to cure for two weeks before recovering the DNA. GenVault recommends storing the gen plates in an environment with less than 40% relative humidity. Such as, desk, such as a desktop archive, personal archive, or dynamic archive. GenVault's desktop archive, our small store, holds up to 100 gen plates. The personal archive, our medium store, holds up to 1200 gen plates. Our dynamic archive scales to meet your needs, with sizes beginning at 12,500 gen plates up to more than 400,000 plates. Recovery of gen plate elements for DNA recovery can be done simply with the gen punch, by punching out the disc of the gen plate through the pierceable bottom and top seals. To perform this procedure, you will need a gen punch and 2 mil snap cap tube for each element you wish to recover. Label the tubes to keep track of your samples. Remove the gen plates from which you wish to recover samples from storage. The gen punch is labeled with corresponding row letters A, B. The aluminum tube holder is labeled with the corresponding column numbers 1, 2. Determine the row, letter and column number of the gen plate element that you wish to remove. Position the tube holder in the grooves on the gen punch labelled with the row letter. Then place a 2 mil tube in the tube holder in the position with the corresponding column number. The caps should point toward the middle of the gen punch. From this position you can remove four gen plate elements without repositioning your tube holder or tube. Place the gen plate onto the positioning stage over the tube holder and tube. The gen plate should fit securely into the grooved corners of the positioning stage. Using the knobs on each side of the gen punch, adjust the tile of the stage to a comfortable position and tighten the knobs. Visually locate the element for removal then, using a P1000 pipette tip, push the element through the adhesive seal and the foil bottom seal. Remove the gen plate, then remove and cap the 2mm tube. Repeat until you have removed all of the gen plate discs.